So it's been a pretty long time since I've done one of these types of logs. And in my head, I've been calling the last couple of weeks a uh, the transition. When I, once again, when I first started Richard's 35th, it was all about an experiment, trying out new things. Doing these logs 60 days in a row was actually quite a feat. And what I found was this Ottawa trip really put a wrinkle into how things were going to happen. In addition, I was not particularly happy with the relevance of the daily logs. So in other words, they get recorded now, we'll say, but they're not published until essentially a few days later, uh, the, the following day, which means that when people watch them, the time reference is not necessarily accurate. So I've been toying with a whole bunch of things. You clearly saw the website is very, very different. And it's actually going to change some more. And we're going to get to that in a short while. But one of the things that I decided I wanted to do was tag videos, sort of capture the moments when I'm having these moral dilemmas or having moments that are really interesting and put them out to me right away through Twitter. Now, unfortunately, another problem that has presented itself, that's my data plan. When it's not one thing, it's another. And, um, my data plan is now hindering me with wind, both from a connectivity problem, connectivity perspective, and from a, an allotment perspective. The wind network sucks. <laughs> it's good. You get what you pay for. And it's, passable when it comes to downloading it's terrible when it comes to uploading so in any case and although it's unlimited there's there's a cap that happens around five gigs and i've sort of reached that cap so and on top of it with what was happening and uh, i think i uploaded a whole bunch of times when i shouldn't have uploaded so i shoot up a whole bunch of problems and i'm looking at alternatives beyond wind Aside from that, I also wanted to make the moment, what would have been the moment of clarities in the past, my major ones, my, my major sort of moments, right? Like big announcements to make, big questions to ask, and that kinds of, those kinds of things. The, the sort of Twitter, YouTube feeds, the, the sort of quick, like 30 seconds to one minute, that sort of that's capturing the, those things about my life that I want to share right away. These more settled moments that last a little longer, they're going to come in and out every so often whenever the um, well, the occasion arises. But they're not going to be set up as, you know, daily log number 63 of 365. They're just going to come whenever I think it's it's a worthy time. And I think this particular one that I'm doing has been overdue and um, and I'm gonna keep working on it and, and keep challenging myself and staying on course so with that being said the transition I think for the most part is complete I think I know what it is that I want to do the website on the other hand is not now the website the way you see it the website the way you see it is gonna change again because and this is something I'm very excited about is one of the regular sort of audience members from Richard's 35th is a gentleman by the name of Paul Hearn. Now, I didn't know who Paul Hearn was for the longest time. He would be commenting on the site and um, I would be responding and, 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 and so on and so forth. It was really interesting. It's like, who's this guy? And I found out who he is purely by accident. He's a regular at Swiss Chalet. He's a guy that I serve all the time. He asks for me and all that kind of jazz. I told him about Richard's 35th, I guess, some time ago, and he's decided to watch and, and follow Richard's 35th. And then when I made that connection, I was like, oh, you're Paul Hearn. You're the Paul. <laughs> all right. I'm at the restaurant here on like a Friday night or something and sort of break out into that moment. So it was really interesting. And, and the thing is, is, even before Richard's 35th, him and I would have 
tremendous discussions as I'm doing my service talking about life, philosophy, being French, and, and all that kind of jazz. And um, we decided to meet outside of Swiss Chalet, just sort of our own time, and continue the conversation where I wouldn't have to say to him, sorry, Paul, gotta go. There's another table I gotta take care of. And it was a really great conversation. We hit on everything, and, and we, didn't we did not necessarily eye to eye on the issues, and that's perfectly fine. But one of the things that Paul has offered is he's recently learned Drupal. Drupal is kind of like saying WordPress, but Drupal is much more powerful. And he wants a, a project to work on where he could practice his skill. And I think you're seeing where this is going. So Paul is going to help me build a much better customized website for Richard's 35th. And I'm really excited about it for a number of reasons. First of all, it's going to help me build the site that I really want to build. Second, it helps fulfill one of the goals that I had for Richard's 35th, which was to get people involved in Richard's 35th in terms of in whatever form it is. And Paul is sort of that first sort of bona fide moment. I've spoken with others in the past that have been watching it and asked for their feedback, but this is in one occasion where an audience member, if you will, Paul in particular, will be helping me directly with Richard's 35th. So I'm excited about that. And uh, I really look forward. We're going to be meeting next week. And the other thing is, is we're going to make it an open sort of work environment where, you know, I'm going to try and put up sort of videos of me and him working together and, and some of the plans and things that we put out and, and see and, and let you guys sort of give... It's not a behind the scenes, it's as we're building it, everyone's going to see what happens. So it's not as though we built it and here's the behind the scenes feature kind of deal. It's like we're going to build it in an open forum. So once again, excited about that. Um, the next one is something I have not really thought about much in the past, but it's something that's been at me now for some time. And by some time, I mean the last month or so. And I've decided to make a, a pretty major life decision, one that most people, I don't think, would be willing to make. I've been living here now since last um, June, I guess. June or May. And it's been good. Me and, and the housemate, you know, we get along for the most part. We're very two very different people, that goes without a doubt. But uh, at the same time, there are some, uh, I don't want to say tensions, but there are some things that irk me about the place, and there are some things that I want to explore myself. I've talked to my dad and a few others, like my mom as well, about possibly moving to Ottawa eventually, because I am spending a lot of time there. And one of the things about my life that most people don't know is that I move like every year. I can't seem to sit still. And... When I say I, like, I move every year, I think I've moved every year for the last six years. We're just jumping from lease to lease. And it gets freaking annoying. Now, I think I'm learning that about myself, right? That instead of killing myself every year, and by the way, I've become an expert at moving. I can usually pack all my stuff in a day and a half get to my new location, and within like 24 hours, I'm settled in. The thing is, I mean, you've got to pay a few hundred dollars, you got to do searching for place, sorry, you got to pay a few hundred dollars for the movers, you got to find a place and all that kind of jazz, and, you know, reference checks and so on, it gets really annoying. But I've decided to try something else, and <laughs> it's a little crazy, but... I'm pretty much going to sell everything that I own, furniture-wise especially. The table, that this is on the couch back there, which is so extraordinarily comfortable. And storage, a lot of my personal belongings, like the books that I have, things of that nature. And I'm going to live essentially out of a suitcase. <laughs> it's going to be a pretty big suitcase. So. And, and then just jump from a plate, like an apartment that, had, that that is furnished, 
And then that way I'm much more mobile. I can move whenever I want to. And the way I have it in my head right now is I'd have uh, essentially probably three suitcases. The first one would be a, a major one, sort of like a, a big sort of vacation suitcase, if you will. And that would be my clothes, underwear, jeans, that kind of stuff. Um, sort of the, the bare necessities. Not the bare necessities, but a collection of my wardrobe, if you will. I would have a smaller suitcase, which would be like the equivalent of the carry-on suitcase, which would be sort of personal effects. Toiletries, uh, you know, those kind of odds and ends that, that you need quick access for. The third one would be actually a hockey bag. A hockey bag that my sister gave many years ago when I never had hockey equipment. But I've kept it because it's a pretty handy bag. And that hockey bag would be the bigger things that I need. I have very potent computer setup. You know, I'd have to put that somewhere and package it. Some of my tools, you, you know, I have one over there, so like uh, toolboxes, that kind of stuff. You know, maybe boots, some of my, you know, riding, motorcycle riding gear, helmet. The heavier elements that can be put in a, in a hockey bag. And as usual, I would have my trusty backpack. And then see how that goes. <laughs> It'll be interesting to say the least. So I've told Mike, the housemate, that I was planning on moving. The agreement that we had is if we either one of us wanted to sort of break the relationship is we'd give each other three months notice as opposed to two months. And at the time, I completely understood. I mean, especially from his perspective as sort of the lessee on the, on, at the house, you know, finding a housemate can be very difficult, right? We got to find the right person. So I said, that's perfectly fine. And vice versa, you know, he has to give me three months notice. So I told him just a few days ago about my plans of giving him three months notice that I will most likely be out by June 1st or July 1st, which would coincide with my motorcycle trip. And lo and behold, one of the things I told him is, you know, I'm more than willing to accommodate situations where if you're able to find a housemate before June 1st or July 1st, you know, I try to find another place because I'm... The whole point of this is for me to be mobile, but we have to come up with an, an, an arrangement of some kind. Well, like I said, this was a few days ago, quite literally like on Wednesday, I think I told him. Comes to me a few days later, I guess today, essentially. Ah, forget what. It was happened this week. I told him at the beginning of the week, and he told me sort of in the last few days that he's already found someone to come in. And that person wants to be in as soon as possible. I guess this other person is extraordinarily miserable where they are. And the housemate, my housemate is familiar with him. So I could be out by April 1st. Now I told him, it's like, I'm not ready for April 1st. I got to solve this stuff. Can you help me? Blah, blah, blah. Like, there's a reason why we have to talk about the three months. So we'll see what happens. And, um, not that I'm afraid about the acceleration, it's just, it, it's happening, right? <laughs> so, we'll see how that happens, but I like the fact that I will be, like I said, considerably more mobile with my life and uh, just go where the wind takes me. Next is, and, and this is perhaps something that's, uh, overdue on my part and it's about my past really and it's pretty heavy and it's funny the way I uh, I like to explain things sometimes is there's difference between sensitive and complicated this is sensitive at least for me um, I have I really sort of led two lives and by two lives I mean I have my sort of Quebec life and I have my Ontario life. And my Quebec life essentially ended at the end of grade six when I was 12 years old and that's when I moved to Toronto. Now obviously memories already are already fuzzy, right? 
the younger you are, you, you tend to forget more than your adult life. But there's a lot that happen, uh, that were tough things in my life, uh, especially my sisters and my moms, that happened while I lived in Quebec. Very poor sort of family. Mom, you know, a single mother trying to raise two children, you know, in a very sort of difficult sort of father living in Toronto slash New Brunswick situation as well. Things have been difficult in the past and I don't give, I think, the amount of credit that I need to give to my mom for being able to sort of go through the storm and see me through to the other end. And because it's funny, it's like if a mom is a <laughs> mom is supposed to shield sh sh a good mom is suppo supposed to shield her children from harm as best as she can. And my mom has certainly done that. She uh, and like I said, not only has she done that, but She's done it with spades, and she should write a book on how to be a mom. Without her, I wouldn't be here. Without her, I'd be... Uh... I like to consider myself a good person. Beyond that, I'm, I think I, I'm more than a good person. I'm a freaking Boy Scout, if you ask anybody help people at the time and it's all because of her and um, the sacrifices that she personally had to make in my youth <laughs> you know having a social life having nice things just for her kids both me and my sister to see us through to the other end of the storm and me and my sister when we were kids we had as good a life as we could in the situation that we had. And, um, she's done quite a bit in giving us up. And when I say she didn't give us up, I don't, you know, in my head, the way I've always sort of had it is the way I explained how I went from Quebec to, to Toronto, at least the way I've always thought it was, is a decision was generally made about because me and my sister used to spend summers in Toronto with my dad, as well as Christmases. And general decision was going to be made that I would move to Toronto to become fully bilingual. My sister had moved to Toronto to become, to, for her own reasons, a year before I had. And then I came over the following year. But for my mom to essentially sever that tie and not only just sever the tie it's like she had to move she lost <laughs> typically whenever you have shared custody custody or whenever you have a family situation where there's a divorce and parents need to share the kids they're in the same town or the very least in, in the same province they're not 600 kilometers apart once again making another sacrifice for for us and I've never truly acknowledged that and I think it's way overdue and uh, it's amazing right how things shape your life <laughs> the things that you take for granted the things that you recognize but don't truly understand and um, although I give my mom all the time, you know, props for being able to be the mom that she is from being so far away, I don't think I'll fully understand what she had to go through. All that I know is what she had to go through has made me the person that I am today. And, and for that reason, She's got to be the best mom in the world. So, I guess that's really about it. 
I'm not quite ready to go into some of the details about my past. All I can say that were tough. And uh, if they were tough for me, they must have been a thousand times tougher for her.